Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here, once again with another video on the Arrow vs. the Hole, but specifically Supergirl and Arrow, because what we're going to be doing in this video is reviewing the first part, I guess you could say, of the big crossover event. It's over two nights, you could say this is part one and two, but I'm just going to count these first two episodes as part one, so yeah. So obviously before we go ahead, there will be spoilers in this review, we're going to be talking about the major talking points, because we're talking about two episodes, I don't want this video to be 27 hours long, so we're just talking about the major parts and the stuff that's really worth talking about. So yeah, if you haven't watched the uh, t first two parts of Supergirl and Arrow of this crossover, like don't watch this video, go watch them because it's awesome, and then come watch this video and discuss your thoughts on it afterwards. So I guess the first thing I really want to talk about is the opening scene where we have the Earth X Arrow, which I guess we're calling Dark Arrow. I guess the Earth X Supergirl is Overgirl and the Earth X Flash is Dark Flash. I think that's what we're going with. Uh, we see him take down Earth X Guardian and it's actually James Olsen from Earth X, which I wasn't expecting. I had heard rumors that Guardian was in this crossover, but I thought, okay, it would just be like a stunt double, but no, it was, um, uh, James Olsen, which is pretty cool, and he had like a different shield and stuff like that, which I thought was pretty awesome. But this like group that's going against the like the Reich from Earth X, like the the Nazis, I guess, is the Rebels. So I think that's a decent thing. I think I was calling them re them the Rebellion or the Rebellion or the Resistance in my videos beforehand. So I got pretty close, I guess. So Rebels. Now I loved the opening uh, after this with all of our heroes, and it's basically just them going, oh crap, Iris's wedding, is, or Barry and Iris's wedding is tomorrow, uh, are we going to it? So it's pretty late, like, all these Iris VPs are very late, like, that's a bit rude, to be completely honest, but we see, um, Flash taking on King Shark, which is awesome, the music that went along with this was really cool as well, but yeah, Flash versus King Shark was awesome, uh, Green Arrow versus some ninjas, it was weird it was just Green Arrow, because usually he goes out with the team, but yeah, it was just Green Arrow taking on some ninjas, and then we saw Supergirl taking on a Dominator, which was pretty awesome as well. And of course, let's not forget about the legends that were in England in the 1200s, I think it was. I think it was that. Oh, the, the 12th century. So the 1100s, I think it was. So they were there. And um, yeah, we only met a couple of the legends this episode. Bit random, I guess. But, um, you know, the shooting schedules and stuff like that. So we'll meet the rest of them in the second part, I guess. Because none of them were in this episode apart from Sarah... Uh, Firestorm and Mick, so the others were just like taking a break, I guess. Now, as I said, all of this connects to the wedding, and I did really like the character interactions that we had at the wedding. It was one thing I was definitely looking forward to, just seeing everyone come together, but that was mainly the heroes, like seeing all of our costumed heroes up and fighting together, but just seeing, you know, the pre-wedding celebrations with like non-powered people, such as like Martin's wife, Martin's daughter, Joe West, all of them, just the non-powered people as well, just at the pre-wedding celebrations was nice to see. And I did like how Joe had his moment in this crossover because obviously Joe's not going to go around fighting. He's really not going to be in this crossover apart from maybe the last episode. He might be in the Legends episode towards the end, but really the wedding stuff was Joe's time to shine because he's not going to be in the rest of the crossover. And I thought the speech that he gave at like the pre-wedding like rehearsal, I guess, was really nice. Now, the issue of Firestorm is going to be a big thing that goes throughout the whole crossover, you would think, and ends on Legends. It's actually pretty fitting that Legends is the last episode of this crossover, because you would assume the Legends, uh, or the Firestorm, might I say, issue will be solved in that episode. But we do get, like, hints at what they're doing with it, with, like, um, Cisco and Wells coming up with a formula where both of them wouldn't be um, super-powered. Like, the Firestorm Matrix will be tricked into thinking it's, like, you know, at a good level, but neither of them would be able to go Firestorm, so they would just be normal people again, which is what Martin wants, but it's not necessarily what Jax wants. But speaking of Martin Stein, we know that Victor Garbutt is leaving Legends. He's doing Broadway in January, I think, uh, or February, one of the two. He might start, like, pre-production in January, but we're going to miss him. He's a great actor, and he's great to have on the show. Just add some, like, wisdom uh, to Legends, and just the arrow versus a whole when it comes to the crossovers. So it's going to be sad when we see him go, but I guess it's his decision, so we have to live with it. Now, one thing going to this crossover, which um, a lot of people were already shipping before the crossover even aired, and that was Sarah and Alex, and they got it. So I think the shipping name is like Dance, because Lance and Danvers, Dance. Um, but yeah, so they got uh, some pretty good moments in this episode if you're a uh, Sarah and Alex shipper, so congratulations. Now we had... I don't know how to talk about this, because I didn't want to talk about it in the crossover videos, because you guys know I hate it. And I hate talking about it, but I have to because for some reason it was such a big part of it. And Olicity, there was an awkward Olicity scene in the in the like the pre-wedding celebrations where like Felicity screams, "I don't want to get married!" And come on, why? Like, who wrote this? 
I know it's to fill in time because even though these crosses of it are awesome and it's really cool that there's over four episodes, there is times they need to fill because every scene can't be a high octane action scene because they cost a lot of money to do. So they have to have these personal moments and you get those in these episodes. There was more than a couple in these um, first two episodes of the crossover. But no one wants the illicity scenes. Like 3% of the people that watch this, if not less, of the viewing population for the crossovers like Olicity, so uh, why did they do it? There were so many people complaining, I was complaining about it because I don't want to see it. And the scene stretched on so long. Like, if it's a one minute scene, sweet, do it. I don't care if it fills in a minute of time, do it. But one of them went for like four or five minutes in Star Labs, I think it was, or maybe three minutes at the least, but it went for a while and I was there going, come on, move along. But what are you gonna do? They're, they're dead set on doing it. I think we know what's gonna happen in the in this crossover, but. We'll talk about that tomorrow in the part two review. But um, yeah, the Elicity scenes. <laughs> now, one big thing, which had been rumored before we went into it, they hadn't confirmed it. They didn't even confirm it in the crossover. But we do see this mysterious actress or mysterious girl come up to Barry and talk like she knows Barry and like knows him personally and stuff like that. And they announced the casting of this actress like, I want to say four days ago. I want to say four or five days ago. Without a character name, they just said that this character would have a connection to Barry and Iris. They didn't just say Barry because in this crossover, we just saw her talk to Barry. Now, this is most likely Dawn Allen, one of Barry and Iris's children, part of the Tornado Twins. The other child is called Don, obviously a male. Didn't see him in, the, in this crossover, but what the uh, assumption is that she's traveled back in time to get closer and see the wedding. Now, would she have known about the Nazi stuff? I don't know, bit weird if she did and she just said it was going to be a really good wedding, but um, I don't think she would have known about that, which makes you think that history has changed, which we will talk about later on because there's a certain person that probably tinkered with that. But seeing Dawn Allen, or Dawn Allen, we don't have any confirmation yet, was pretty cool. And I think if she is this person, is Dawn Allen, then I think we'll see her come back in you know the back half of The Flash this season and there might be a storyline there. We had Kara singing that Running Home To You song. Now, if you didn't watch the Flash Supergirl musical crossover episode last season, then you would not know or have heard that song before. That song was the song that Barry sang to Iris when he proposed to her again. So that's the connection, if people were wondering. But then we had the big action scene for this crossover, or this episode, might I say, of the crossover. And the one that was, you know, highly um, advertised, which is the big fight scene in the church, or the, yeah, the church. Um, with the Nazi wedding crashes, and this was awesome. I love this scene. It went on for much longer than I thought it would, and I was extremely happy that it went on for a decent amount of time. But in regards to the MVP of the episode, or that that um that fight scene, it has to go to Killer Frost. That ice sword that she gets out, awesome. Just awesome. I want to see more of that, and I think we might get a lot more cool Killer Frost moments in the uh, Flash and Legends episodes tomorrow because there were some cool Killer Frost parts in this episode But she wasn't involved in every major action scene so she didn't get to uh, flaunt that ice sword around So I'm expecting more of that tomorrow and yeah, that was my favorite part But I did like Mick as well But another cool part of that fight scene was then when it was on like Supergirl versus Overgirl and like Supergirl does the big like super clap and just like causes like a sonic boom uh, Awesome, can we see more of that please? But this whole big fight results in Prometheus being called Earth-X Prometheus, which I think we all knew about because in like the church scene, we did see Prometheus, but in all the other promotional material, like Prometheus is not to be seen. And we'll talk about Prometheus in a second, but we do get the explanation as to why Wally is in this crossover, which I thought was really lame. I thought it was so lame and it's just an excuse to not have more CGI budget used on another character and maybe to make the, our heroes a bit more underpowered even though they are pretty overpowered at the moment and Wally is essentially like personal security for Joe and Cecile what like take him take them just speed them off somewhere and then come back it would take you like half an hour at the max Wally Barry what are you thinking like surely they could use I bet Barry come now the end of this uh first night is going shit Sh shit I shouldn't have told Wally to stay with Joe and Cecile. We really could use another speedster now. So that was weird, and I don't know why that happened, but that explains why Wally is no longer in the crossover. So disappointing. Now we just covered Supergirl pretty well. I thought it was a really decent episode, but now let's move on to the arrow portion of this crossover. So let's just start it off with a really cool moment. Prometheus is Tommy Merlin from Earth-X. I think I 
said this would be the case because he'd been spotted in Vancouver and around the set, not on set, but around the set. And this was just nice. I thought it was a really cool moment. It was so good seeing Oliver Queen interact with Tommy Merlin again. I do think um, Stephen Amell and Colin Donnell, Colin Donnell plays Tommy Merlin and obviously Stephen Amell plays Oliver Queen, just have really good chemistry, good back and forth. This scene was really good, like the emotional stakes of it as well, because, you know, this is Tommy Merlin. This is Oliver's best friend who died at the end of season one. We're in season six of Arrow. Back at the end of season one, Tommy died. So I thought this was a really nice moment and definitely one of the highlights for the crossover. No matter what happens in the back two episodes of Flash and Legends, this Prometheus Oliver conversation will still be up there as one of my favorite moments of the crossover. I just loved it. But along with this, we get the Earth Hex history reveal where like, you know, uh, you know, Germany won World War II, the Nazis took over like the major cities and stuff like that. You know, not too surprising. I think a lot of us knew about the history going in, like, you know, well, they won World War II, they said it in the trailers. So this wasn't too much of a reveal, but it was nice that they revealed it just in case there was like a novice to this, like someone that hadn't watched any of the promos, doesn't watch these shows regularly and just sort of tune in because it's a big event. At least they did that to explain it all, which I thought was good. But one thing, as you know, I didn't like Elicity earlier on in this uh, episode, but one thing which would have uh, sort of annoyed the Elicity shippers would have been uh, the fact that EarthX Oliver and EarthX Kara are a married couple and best ship. <laughs> no, okay. No, they were good. Okay, I think it makes sense. You know, two powerful people get together, get wedded, power couple. Why not? But back to Firestorm for a second, um, they don't really talk about too much in this episode. I think they're going to follow it on in the last two episodes, probably specifically Legends. I think Legends will be the episode where that really gets resolved and there's a big Firestorm portion of the, that episode just like resolving what's going on there. But I did like that moment between Jax and Stein about how, well, you know, he doesn't want to be alone. He, like, he didn't get to interact with his father and he sees Martin or Martin Stein as a father now and Martin just wants to go. He just wants to leave Jax, essentially. And Jax is taking that really personally. So that's obviously going to eat away at Martin over the next, you know, couple of episodes leading up to Legends. And obviously he's not going to feel very good about it. So I'm interested to see where that goes in the next two episodes. As I said, not much was talked about in this episode about that. But um, yeah, I had to, you felt for Jax in that situation because what he was telling was the truth. But my, one of my favorite lines in this episode was when Barry and Kara are just like waiting in that, in that car park going like, Jesus, where is this dude? Like, how long does he take? And Oliver finally gets there on his motorbike and just, dudes, guys and girls, I don't have super speed. I repeat, I don't have super speed. I, I thought that was hilarious. But there was certain scenes in this episode where like the heroes would fly off and Oliver would have to swing with his arrow. And I was like, super gold, like lift him up. He's not going to feel that bad if it's going to, if he's going to get to the destination like five times faster, just lift him up, take him, bit of a, it's not a very friendly move, just lift him up and take him. So I was surprised there wasn't any of that in this episode. Uh, maybe in the back half we might get a scene where Supergirl actually carries Oliver to a destination so he isn't on a bike or swinging through the towers or the buildings of whatever city they're in and taking 20 times longer. So Kara, just some consideration please. The Heroes vs. Doppelgangers fight was pretty good. I think they might be saving a better Hero vs. Doppelgangers fight for the, one of the last two episodes. Probably the last one, but we'll have to wait and see. But we do get the debut of the Kryptonite Arrow, which I think we were all hoping we'd, we would see. And of course, we did see. And it was really cool. Like, it's covered in metal or lead, might I say. Most likely lead. And yeah, and it opens um, once it's released. So, so I thought that was really cool. Kara should, should be scared of that because you never know the Dark Arrow, like the Earth Eggs version might get a hold of one of them and maybe use it against Kara. So she might be on the lookout for that. But that thought that was really cool. But in regards to these doppelgangers, you know, uh, Oliver and Kara had their doppelgangers, but Barry, there was no doppelganger of Barry. The evil uh, Flash from Earth X was actually Harrison Wells. But no, it's actually Eobard Thorne. It's the Earth One Reverse Flash posing as Harrison Wells because it's, I think he said it was like, reminds him of old times or he thought it was fitting something along those lines correct me from the comments if I'm wrong there but that makes a lot of sense and it, it makes sense why they target earth one stuff like that so I thought that was awesome but this whole thing of doppelgangers about oh there's another car on that earth just really brings up the question because even uh Harry says it, it's like oh well there's 53 earths there's 53 cars so where's earth one car hmm I wonder if we'll be seeing her anytime soon or maybe he's just saying in general there should be 53 versions of a character of a, of a person might I say, but on our, on our Earth, maybe there isn't a Earth One Kara, but we'll have to wait and see. There should be an Earth One Alex Danvers though, so where's she? 
The Dark Arrow and Star Lab scene was pretty cool. It was pretty menacing. I was expecting a tiny bit more. I'm a bit annoyed that Dark Arrow isn't killing anyone because they've been saying, like even Tommy Merlin, like the Prometheus was saying, oh, he'll just kill people. He has no fear, but he's not killing anyone. Like he, he might've been going to kill Heatwave in that situation, but he didn't even like, he was going very slow. Didn't seem like he was really, didn't care too much. Like I understand like not killing the main characters like Flash and stuff because he might need a purpose for them. But just side characters, like, I'm surprised he's not killing them. Like, it just seems a bit weird. I know it's just convenience, because if he was going around killing everyone, then, you know, a lot of people would die. But it just makes no sense to me, so I'm a bit disappointed there. But it was cool to see Team Arrow join the fight. Even if it was just for a second, we saw Dino Drag, Mr. Terrific, and Wild Dog join, because I was wondering when they were going to come into the fold, seeing this was an Arrow episode, and they finally came in, so that made sense. We also saw Metallo, we knew Metallo was going to be in this crossover because of the, one of the most recent posters they revealed and it makes me think, why did they release that poster? This would have been such a surprise if Metallo just showed up in this crossover and they didn't need to release like Metallo on that poster. It wouldn't have made more people watch like, oh Metallo's in the crossover, I've got to watch. Why did they release that poster? I, I don't know. It was very silly in my, in my opinion. We didn't see Red Tornado who was also in that poster so I'm assuming next episode or one of the last episodes we'll see Red Tornado. Um, I don't know why they showed Metallo on that poster, sort of ruined the surprise, but yeah. But I guess the big thing that's going to lead into next episode, or one of the big things, is around Overgirl needing Supergirl to save her. Essentially, Overgirl's got this overdose of solar radiation, she needs a new heart, and they'd been saying earlier in the crossover that they were using that solar radiation to track her, so it's slowly killing her. You can see she's in pain, she can like barely stand up, so she's struggling, and that's basically the premise for next episode. In regards to those two characters of Supergirl and Overgirl, it's essentially a heart transplant. So I wonder how the hell Kara is going to get out of that situation. Barry better start thinking. Take some of DeVoe's thinking power and start thinking up a plan because you're going to need it. Because Kara is definitely in trouble. And the other big thing which sort of leads into next episode is the fact that our heroes are in a prison. It's essentially like a mock concentration camp. That's what it seems like they're going for. Like even all the prisoners are in like the attire that people would wear in concentration camps. So yeah, they're going to have to work on what's going on here, how they're going to get out there. It's a shame that uh, Mick isn't there because they could have done a prison break thing, but we know who is over there, Citizen Cole from Earth X. So if there is not a prison break joke, we riot. Better be a prison, uh, but there better be a prison uh, break joke. Am I speaking correctly? This crossover has fried my brain, doing this video has fried my brain. Oh, I'm just a bit too excited. I can't wait for tomorrow. But overall, this first part or first night of crossover action crisis on Earth X, was a lot of fun. I think I might have preferred the first episode um, just because I thought it worked better. I think it flowed better. This episode was back and forth between a lot of different areas. I thought the pacing was a bit off, but that they sort of had to do that to set up things for next night. So I, I don't mind if they sacrifice an episode to um, set things up, if that makes sense. I don't mind if it's a bit messy in one episode to set things up for the next night. So I wasn't too annoyed about that, but I do think the uh, the first part of this episode just flowed a bit better. And of course, it had that church fight scene, which was just awesome. It was just really awesome. Uh, so yeah, I think that was just a bit cleaner, so I thought it was a better episode. But don't get me wrong, the second episode of Arrow was really good as well. And uh, I can't wait for tomorrow night. It's going to be awesome. But just a reminder, I am actually live streaming tomorrow morning. Uh, well, tomorrow morning, my time. So it'll be about three hours before the show's debut or go live. So the three hours before Flash starts... Um, tomorrow or today from whenever you're watching this video, I'll be live streaming. So just keep your eyes out for my channel and we'll be talking everything in detail. You can ask me questions and stuff about the first two parts of Supergirl and Arrow for this crossover, uh, crossover event. So just keep your eyes out for that. And, um, yeah, I'll see you there, but thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I know that this has probably been a longer one. Hopefully it's not too long for you guys to watch, but if you did enjoy the video, it would be awesome if you could drop a like on it to show your support. Let me know in the comment section down below. What was your favorite part of the crossover? Which episode did you prefer? The Supergirl episode or the Arrow episode? I know they're meant to flow um, along, which they really do, but I just thought the first half of it, so the Supergirl episode, was a bit cleaner, and the second half was just a bit, just a bit messy, but I understand they had to set some stuff up. So yeah, just let me know in the comments section what, which, what your favorite part was, and uh, yeah, just what you liked about the crossover. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys, and goodbye.